You're listening to CJSF 90.1 FM online at www.cjsf.ca, broadcasting from Burnaby, British Columbia at Simon Fraser University. This is KP Wee with This Week in BC Minor League Sports. And during this half-hour show today, we'll recap Week 21 of the BC Major Midget League, which is a league for 15 to 17 year olds playing competitive hockey here in the, in the province of british columbia uh, we don't do any major league sports in this program because uh, this is a community radio station and also there's plenty of minor league sports or junior sports locally for you to check out uh, for example minor hockey especially if you're here in the lower mainland now what i'll be focusing on here on this program because it's hockey season is the bc major midget league with the final week of the regular season happening this weekend and then the playoffs will begin next friday now the top seven playoff spots have already been clinched but some of the seedings have not yet been decided including top spot overall in the league Uh, so really the only thing that's been decided in terms of seeding is a third spot in the standing so it's still a big weekend here uh, this weekend in the bc major midget league i'm going to go over the standings a little bit later on in this program but before that i'm going to recap last weekend's uh, action uh, week number 21 of the bc major midget league right here on cjsf radio now just some background information uh, if you're listening for the first time about the bc major midget league it was established in 2004 to provide elite level 15 16 and 17 year old players an opportunity to play within their own age group at a high level now this league also helps to develop these young hockey players as they prepare for junior hockey leagues and beyond. And with the BC Major Midget League, uh, there are games being held every weekend, either in the Lower Mainland in Burnaby, Langley, Richmond, or Coquitlam, or out of town uh, in Prince George, Nanaimo, uh, Victoria, Kelowna, Chase, and Castlegar. Now, all of the games are free to attend, so it's good to check out this league if you're interested in some good competitive minor hockey action. And uh, it's you know it's a privilege to be able to talk about uh, the BC Major Midget League on our sports program here on CJSF 90.1 FM, and uh, you know um, it might not get a lot of press um, in other stations or on other uh, sports shows, but. Uh, it's it's good to talk about this league because um, National Hockey League players such as Evander Kane, uh, Brandon Gallagher, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, just to name a, a couple, uh, they played in this league during their teens. And in fact, in 2010, there were 16 former BC Major Midget League players who were drafted by NHL teams, including Gallagher. And there are 10 former players from the BC Major Midget League drafted in 2013, which was last year, uh, by NHL teams. So you could you, know, you could be watching future NHL stars if you come out and take in some of these games in the BC uh, Major Midget League. Now, this is the final weekend of the season, of the regular season anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, again, it's a privilege to be able to cover this league and talk about uh, these future stars uh, on this program. Uh, now, so let's t- take a look at the BC Major Midget League action. Um, on, on, as 10 of the 11 teams were in action last weekend with only the third place value West Hawks idle. So now with the game action, let's start off first at the Hollyburn Country Club in West Vancouver, where the Vancouver Northwest Giants took on the visiting Thompson Blazers on Saturday night, February the 22nd. Now on paper, this game looked like a mismatch with the Giants tied for first place with only five losses in 36 games a season. The Blazers, meanwhile, had won only five games all year and were second last in the league standings. And as it turned out, it was all Giants in this one. Uh, Owen Stout opened the scoring for the Giants just a minute and 15 seconds into the contest. And Captain Quinn Thompson added another goal later in the second or later in the first period, I should say. And it was 2 nothing after 20 minutes. Now, Vancouver Northwest poured it on in the second period when high-scoring defenseman Dante Fabro got his 21st goal of the season just two minutes in. It was 3-0 at that point. And the Giants weren't done there because four minutes after that, Quinn Thompson scored his second goal of the game and then his third to complete the hat trick with five minutes remaining in the second period. Now, in total, the Giants scored five times in that period alone and they were ahead 7-0 after 40 minutes. Uh, Vancouver Northwest added three more goals in the third period with Tech and Holt getting two of them to make the final score 
Giants 10, Thompson Blazers nothing. Now, while Giants captain Quinn Thompson was a big story in the contest with three goals, giving him 24 on the season, Justin Zito also had a big night with five assists in the game for the Giants. Uh, Colton Kerfoot, the league's leading scorer, had a goal and three assists as well. So a big night overall for the Vancouver Northwest Giants as they win 10 nothing over the Thompson Blazers on Saturday night. Now with the win, the Giants improved to an amazing 30 wins, 5 losses, and 2 ties on the season. So uh, again, just amazing record, 30 wins in 37 games on the season. That's first place in the league. And the Giants then took on the Blazers again on Sunday morning, again at the Hollyburn Country Club in West Vancouver. Uh, this time, the score was much closer, but it was still the same result. Because uh, the Giants won in the end. And Dante Fabro, the high scoring defenseman of the Giants, put them ahead uh, midway through the first period on Sunday with his 22nd goal of the season. Colton Kerfoot notched his 34th goal of the year late in the first period, and it was 2 0 after 20 minutes. Captain Quinn Thompson continued his hot scoring streak with his 25th of the year, six minutes into the, th into the second period, and it was 3 0. The Thompson Blazers finally got on the scoreboard just over a minute after that with Alex Winters scoring to make it 3-1. to one. But unfortunately, that was as close as the Blazers would get because Quint Banjafield scored for the Giants with 7 minutes left in the second period and the Giants added 2 more goals in the third to make it 6-1. to one. Now The Blazers' Dexter Robinson scored late in the third period to make the final score on Sunday. The Vancouver Northwest Giants 6 the Thompson Blazers too. Now Colton Kerfoot had a goal and two assists on Sunday as he still leads the league in scoring one point ahead of Okanagan's Tyson Jost. Now the weekend sweep by the Giants gave them a record of 31 wins, five losses and two ties and that's good for 64 points. Now they went into last weekend tied for first place with the Okanagan Rockets so how did those Rockets do? Well, Okanagan took on the Caribou Cougars for a pair of games in Prince George last weekend, and it was all Rockets on Saturday. Tyson Jaw scored four goals and added two assists, while Liam Finley had a goal and three helpers as the Rockets defeated the Cougars by a score of 9-2. to two. Now, The Rockets, who were having some injury problems, would play the majority of the game on Sunday morning with only 12 skaters. Now, Despite playing shorthanded, the Rockets once again found a way to win, as they beat the Cougars 5-4 on Sunday to complete the two-game sweep. Now, Okanagan lost two players in the first period in the Sunday contest, with Liam Finley getting knocked out of the game with an injury, and Marlon Head being ejected from the game because of an illegal hit. Uh, but it was Tyson Joss who came through again, getting three goals, uh, two in the third period, to lift the Rockets to the one-goal victory on Sunday morning and with the Rockets trailing 3-2 late in the second period in that one, uh, Joss got his 37th goal of the year to tie it. Uh, the Cougars actually went ahead 4-3 early in the third period on Jesse Roach's second goal of the game, but the Rockets tied it on Joss's 38th goal of the season with 12 minutes remaining in regulation. Uh, Joss then completed the hat trick with 9.25 remaining in the game to make it a 5-4 final for Okanagan. Now for Jost, it was his third consecutive game with at least three goals, so uh, three straight hat tricks for Tyson Jost. Now he, he has 39 goals in the season in only 34 games, and teammate Tanner Campbell, meanwhile, added his 29th goal of the season for Okanagan. Uh, Jesse Roach had two goals and an assist for Caribou in a losing effort. Now with the series sweep, um, or sorry, with the two wins uh, over the Cougars, I should say, on the weekend, the Rockets improved to 31-5-2, and and they remain tied with the Vancouver Northwest Giants for first place heading into this weekend, uh, the final weekend of the regular season. Now the Rockets do have the tiebreaker if both teams finish with the same identical record. Now on to more action. In a high-scoring affair on Saturday night in Abbotsford, the Fraser Valley Thunderbirds clinched a playoff spot with an 8-6 victory over the visiting Vancouver Northeast Chiefs. Andrew Strelatsky had three goals and assists for the Thunderbirds. Alexander Burke added two goals for the Thunderbirds as well. And Captain Austin Wellsby had three assists. 
Now, the Thunderbirds' five-goal second period gave them a 6-3 lead after 40 minutes. And even though the Chiefs scored three times in the final period, it wasn't enough in an 8-6 outcome. Chiefs captain Connor Burke had four assists, though, in a losing effort uh, for Vancouver Northeast. Then on Sunday, the, sh the series shifted to the Planet Ice rink in Coquitlam, and the Chiefs jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the second period on goals by Austin Campo and Connor Burke. The Thunderbirds, though, tied the game with two goals in the latter stages of the second, with Andrew Sharlatsky notching his 26th goal of the season and Austin Wells beginning his 17th of the year, and the score was tied 2-2 after 40 minutes. In the third period, the Chiefs struck for five goals, uh, with Matthew Davis getting a pair, and the Chiefs went on to a 7-3 victory. And I chatted with, with Thunderbirds head coach Bill Grief after Sunday's contest. With Bill Grief, the head coach of the Fraser Valley Thunderbirds, a tough 7-3 loss today to the Chiefs, but uh, coming in, you guys had been undefeated in the last six games to clinch a playoff spot. So uh, thoughts on your team's play the last three weeks? Yes, our team's played very well down the, down the stretch here. We've, uh, we've got a lot of confidence in what we're doing. Today we had a couple of in injuries in this game, so we had to pull up a couple AP players, and it indicated that uh, we got a 7-3 loss today. But our team's uh, uh, focused on uh, doing well and going far in the playoffs, and uh, we're looking good right now. Now, there was no letdown to after you guys clinched a playoff spot last night because you, you guys came out hard in the third period uh, in a fast-paced game. Uh, so, are you are you proud of the your, the, the way you guys play? Oh, uh, we're very proud of this team. The well, how far they've come. They've come a long ways, and and they've got a lot of pride in what they're doing, and a lot of compassion for the game. And uh, we're happy to. I'm very happy with where we are sitting right now. Once again, congratulations, Coach Grieve, and uh, good luck in the playoffs. Oh, thank you. And here's Andrew Strelatsky with three goals on Saturday and one more on Sunday, giving him 26 goals in 38 games this season. Andrew Strelatsky a forward uh, for the Fraser Valley Thunderbirds. Uh, tough 7-3 loss today to the Chiefs, but uh, congratulations for clinching a playoff spot last night. And you had a big game last night, three goals and an assist. Uh, thoughts about uh, your, your, your uh, efforts? Uh, yeah. Our team uh, battled real hard. We uh, won races with the Fox. We uh, really worked hard. It was a good team effort to make the playoffs. Now, you guys uh, were a hot streak coming into today, uh, like undefeated in the last six games. Uh, what have been the keys to your team's success these last three weeks? I think it's just working together as a team, you know, everyone's battling, getting along. But uh, playoffs are coming up, so we've got to really come together soon. And uh, you're an all-star this year, Andrew, so tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, have you been drafted? Uh, actually, no. Okay, and what are your plans for next season? Uh, just try out for uh, Junior A team. Or WHL. Okay, good luck on that. And uh, tell us who your favorite NHL player is and why. Probably Sidney Crosby. Just, he's just, uh, just come, shows up every game because at 110 percent, and he produces a lot. So yeah, probably Crosby. All right, awesome. So thanks so much, Andrew, uh, for the interview. And again, congratulations for making the playoffs. All right, thank you. Thank you. Time now for a public service announcement, and then we'll be back for some more scores and updates from the BC Major Midget League right here on CJSF 90.1 FM. Uh, on Saturday, March 8, 2014, Young Women in Business, Simon Fraser University, also known as YWIB SFU, will be hosting a conference for the SFU community and the high school and post-secondary students of Greater Vancouver at Century Plaza Hotel in celebration of International Women's Day. Featuring inspirational guest speakers, a well-rounded panel, and an engaging expo, the conference is dedicated to encourage professional and personal growth. Now, with a the theme this year as defining success, their goal is to engage the community in the discussion of the various definitions of success, empowering each other to pursue their true passions. Now, I should mention that this event is for females and males, as YWIB is welcoming uh, males to attend as well. Uh, they've also added the full speaker and panelist biographies up on their webpage at www.ywib.ca slash SFU, so you can check that out. That's www.ywib.ca slash SFU. 
Uh, now, for more in more information about this event, uh, it's, again, it's happening on Saturday, March the eighth. The location is Century Plaza Hotel at ten fifteen Barrard Street. That's ten fifteen Barrard Street in Vancouver. Uh, this is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the dress code is business casual. Uh, ticket prices now for high school students, the price is $25 and that's if you get your ticket between now and March the 2nd. Uh, the ticket price on, for SFU students who are non YWIP members is $35 provided you get your ticket by March the 2nd. Uh, the general admission ticket price is $40 if you get your ticket by March 2nd. Then that will be for students from other post-secondary institutions and also uh, for professionals as well. Again, for more information, you can go to www.ywib.ca slash SFU. That's www.ywib.ca slash SFU. And on their website, you also get the latest updates regarding guest speakers, exhibitors, and other exciting new perks that they'll be prepared to present. In fact, uh, they've updated their expo page so we can uh, take a look at some of their exhibitors. Now back to this week in BC Minor League Sports and more scores from last weekend in the BC Major Midget League. At the Richmond Oval, the Greater Vancouver Canadians took on the last place Kootenai Ice in a pair of games last weekend. On Saturday, the Canadians ripped the ice by a score of 10-0 with Dante Hanoon getting four goals. Blake Hayward also added two goals for the Canadians. And then on Sunday, the Canadians and the Ice played to a 3-3 tie with Trevor Ben Steinberg getting the tying goal for Kootenai with 146 remaining in the second period. Neither team scored in the third, and the game ended in a 3-3 draw. Now, a big point uh, for the Ice on Sunday as they improved to 5-27-6, and, uh, and they move into a tie with the Thompson Blazers for 10th place. Now, the Ice and Blazers play twice against each other uh, this weekend, and that will decide who finishes 10th and who will finish in last place. Uh, the Canadians, meanwhile, have wrapped up their regular season schedule. Uh, they finished the year 19, 18, and 3. They have 41 points and are one point ahead of the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs for fourth place. Now, the Chiefs are in tough this weekend against the first place Okanagan Rockets, who will try to win out to remain in first place over the Vancouver Northwest Giants. Uh, got all that? Well, essentially, the Chiefs can still finish fourth. Uh, if they win one of the two games in Kelowna against the Rockets this weekend uh, because the Chiefs trailed the Canadians by one point in the standings and the Canadians uh, are finished with their regular season schedule. So the Canadians cannot uh, uh, add to their point total. Uh, so they're stuck at 41 points and the Chiefs have 40 points with two games remaining this weekend, and both games are in Kelowna against the Rockets. Now, the Rockets also need to keep winning to remain in first place, uh, so basically everyone needs to win, so it should make for a competitive final weekend uh, of the season. Um, finally, the North Island Silver Tips and the South Island Royals split a home-and-home -home series last weekend. The Royals won on the road in Nanaimo on Saturday, beating the Silver Tips 3-2. Uh, the Silver Tips then returned to favor on Sunday, beating the hometown Royals in Victoria by an 8-2 to score. Uh, this again was an important matchup because the Silver Tips and the Royals are battling for the 8th and final playoff spot in the league. Uh, the Silver Tips now have 29 points, are in, they're in 8th place. The Royals have 28 points and are in ninth place. So just one point separates these two teams and only one of them will go to the playoffs. Now, the South Island Royals, they will take on the 7th place Fraser Valley Thunderbirds at home this weekend uh, for a pair of games. And the North Island Silver Tips battle the 3rd place Valley West Hawks at home. Uh, so it looks, right at, it looks like at this point, the 9th place Royals, they have an easier schedule, so to speak, because they're playing against the 7th place um, Thunderbirds um, and the 8th place Silver Tips are taking on a third place Value West team, which is uh, uh, fairly strong. But uh, you never know, so that's why they play the games, and we'll see uh, who will clinch that uh, final playoff spot uh, between the Silver Tips and the Royals. So it should be an intriguing weekend, uh, as you know, the final playoff spot could come down to the final games of the of the season. 
Uh, now, for this weekend schedule, none of the games are happening in the Lower Mainland, unfortunately. But uh, if you're out in Prince George, um, the Caribou Cougars will take on the Vancouver Northwest Giants for a pair of games. Uh, and in Kelowna, the Okanagan Rockets will take on the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs for two games as well. Now, what's at stake here again is that the Giants and the Rockets are battling for the number one seed in the league and for home ice advantage for the playoffs. Uh, the Chiefs who are playing the Rockets still have a shot at fourth place. Uh, so it's a, it's a big game for them as well. Um, the Chiefs are sitting just one point back of the Greater Vancouver Canadians who have completed their regular season schedule and are idle uh, this weekend. Uh, for a complete list of uh, for the complete listing of games this weekend, check out the league's website at www.bcmml.net. Uh, and now let's take a look at the standings uh, heading into uh, the final weekend of the season. Uh, as mentioned, the Okanagan Rockets and the Vancouver Northwest Giants are tied for first place. Both teams have 31 wins, 5 losses, and 2 ties. That's good for 64 points. Um, even though both teams are tied for first place, uh, the Rockets have the tiebreaker because they uh, went 2-1-1 one, and one against the Giants uh, earlier this season. Uh, meanwhile, the Valley West Hawks are in third place and uh, they cannot move up or down in the standings, so they're locked in at, at the third spot. Uh, Valley West has a record of 25 wins, 11 losses, and 2 ties. That's good for 52 points. The Greater Vancouver Canadians, as mentioned, uh, have finished a regular season schedule and they finish with a record of 19 wins, 18 losses and 3 ties. Uh, so one game over 500. They have 41 points in 40 games. Uh, they're in 4th place, but that could change depending on what happens uh, with the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs. Because the Chiefs right now are in 5th place. They have 40 points, 1 point back of the Canadians. Uh, the Chiefs have a record of 18, 16, and 4. But as mentioned, they are going to be in tough this weekend because they take on uh, the first place Okanagan Rockets. So uh, it could again come down to the final day of the season uh, to see if the Chiefs can somehow over overtake the Greater Vancouver Canadians for fourth place. Uh, you know the Canadians and the Chiefs. Uh, would be facing off in the first round of the playoffs if the standings hold. Um, and again, home ice, would, home ice advantage will be important uh, for the playoffs because uh, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the playoffs before we get to the rest of the standings because the playoffs will start uh, next Friday and it's a, it's a best of three series. So they'll play Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and uh, whichever team wins two games first will clinch the series so uh, for the Canadians and the Chiefs who right now are fourth and fifth they will take on each other in the playoffs if the standings remain the way they are and the fourth place team in this case the Canadians they would have home ice advantage uh, for all three games so again it's a very a very important in terms of trying to uh, you know get into fourth place so that you can get home ice for the series and um, try and move on to the next round. So definitely an important um, weekend for the Chiefs as they try to finish in fourth place if they can somehow get by the Okanagan Rockets. So those are the, the top five spots in the standings. Um, now sixth place belongs to the Caribou Cougars who have a record of 17 wins, 19 losses, and two ties. And Again, here, uh, the Cougars, even though they're in sixth place, they could potentially move into fifth if they win both of their games and uh, the Chiefs lose both of theirs. So the Cougars still have something to play for. If they win both their games this weekend, they have a chance to finish in fifth place. So again, the standings could change um, on the final day of the season when all the teams have wrapped up their games uh, for the weekend. Now, in seventh place, uh, the Fraser Valley Thunderbirds uh, have a record of 15 wins, 19 losses, and four ties. Uh, they have 34 points. And again, uh, if they s somehow were able to win both their games this weekend, the Thunderbirds could potentially move into sixth place. So again, there's a lot to play for uh, for you know for these final two games of the season. And as mentioned, only 
third place is locked up, and that's the Valley West Hawks. Um, you know, obviously, you, every team will still try to play hard because they want to get into the playoffs with momentum. But uh, you could see teams going up and down. Uh, you know, over the final two games of the season. So uh, these standings, right, right now as it stands, it could change uh, by Sunday afternoon. But for now, the Thunderbirds uh, of Fraser Valley are in seventh place, and they have 34 points with 15 wins, 19 losses, and four ties. And the battle for 8th place belongs to uh, the North Island Silver Tips, who right now hold the 8th spot. They have 12 wins, 21 losses, and 5 ties for 29 points. The South Island Royals are 9th right now. They are 1 point back of 8th place. Uh, they have 12 wins, 22 losses, and 4 ties for 28 points. And again, uh, between the Silver Tips and the Royals, uh, who are eighth and ninth right now? Only one of those two teams will make the playoffs as a final uh, seed in the uh, playoffs starting next week. And uh, finally, in tenth place or tied for tenth place, I should say, are the Kootenai Ice and the Thompson Blazers. Both the Ice and the Blazers have a record of five wins, 27 losses, and six ties. Uh, both teams have 16 points. And as mentioned earlier in the program, both teams will uh, face off against each other uh, this weekend to determine who will finish last and who will finish in 10th place. So again, an exciting weekend uh, coming up. And uh, unfortunately, of course, none of the games are happening in the lower mainland. Uh, but if you are um, in Kelowna or if you're in Prince George or in the interior, uh, you're close by to these games, definitely go check them out. They're free to attend and should make for a, a, an exciting uh, weekend because of you know, what's at stake uh, in, in terms of the standings and the seedings and uh, the final playoff spot. Now, one final piece of announcement here before we wrap up the show. Um, the SFU men's hockey team has secured home ice advantage for the first round of the BC Intercollegiate Hockey League playoffs and tickets are on sale for the first playoff game happening on Friday, March the 7th at 7 p.m. at the Bill Copeland Sports Center. Uh, for ticket information, you can go to www.burrabemountainhockey.com slash tickets.html. Again, that's www.burrabemountainhockey.com slash tickets.html. That's going to do it for this week's program. Uh, we'll be back one week from now for the next show, and we'll talk to you again next time.